as Marvel's Hawkeye. Hit the mark. That's for me and you to find out. Coming up now. All right, all right, all right. That's right. This is your man Z with our reviews will kill you and my typical Marvel rants as we go through all of the TV shows. And I'm going to try to place this one somewhere for you. Uh, somewhere in between WandaVision, Falcon and Winter Soldier, Loki, and What If Hawkeye. The mightiest Christmas Avengers movie show TV thing I've ever seen. Now you've heard me. I've got my MCU rants. Well, at least my Marvel TV show rants. And I will link them up here. But what you're going to do is uh, listen to me rant about this one. And we'll see how we how it goes. But first, I'd just like to remind you, we are a small channel. We could really use your support. If you like these rants, news, and reviews, please give us a like, thumbs up, subscribe. Big help. We could really use it. Anyway, Hawkeye. So what did I think? I actually liked it. I'm going to, there's some big, big things I don't like about it. And the things that I do like about it were in small quantities, pun intended. So I'm going to get into it. I'll break it all down and let's see where it goes from here. Reminder, this will have spoilers because we're doing the whole season. So let's go to the story. Clint Barton is in New York City with his kids and is, I guess, exploring the city, having fun with the kids when... He has to clean up a problem that I guess he, he finds out. Uh, the problem starts when Katie Bishop, played by Haley Steinfeld, shows up. And she is an aristocrat, I guess. She, she uh, you know, grew up idolizing Clint Barton and then and sees him with the Battle of New York, which ties into her history, which is all that's pretty cool. I'm liking that. And then what ends up happening is that uh, sh her mother's throwing a party. She uncovers that in this party they are selling forbidden Avenger tech and things that they found at the Avenger compound, including a watch, which ends up kind of being sort of relevant, I guess. I don't know. I wasn't sure how I felt about that. And then the thing that seems to be the, the driving force is the Ronin costume. As we know, Clinton Barton did some naughty things while he was away in the blip. Well, he didn't get blipped. He stayed around. And apparently he had a nemesis. And that story would have been much more interesting than what we got here. But hey, that's okay. I'm okay with a little Christmas story. Let's keep going. So uh, this uh, Katie Bishop, aforementioned uh, young collegiate girl, picks up the uni this outfit, starts using it because... And I thought this was ridiculous, that it would fit her. But I actually looked up their sizes, and I'm pretty sure he's like 5'9", and she's 5'8", so I'll let it slide this one time that she could wear his outfit. Now, he doesn't, she doesn't fill it out, and she doesn't look like she fills it out either. But everybody goes, ah, oh, Ronan's back in town. So a lot of people get mad about that. That's where you get this. The main thrust of the story is that Clint Barton needs to protect Katie Bishop and her family because he's been discovered. Or, or, or he's afraid of, of what will happen if the Ronin comes back and a lot of people want to kill the Ronin. We're going to cut through a lot of nonsense. There's another girl. Her name is Echo. She's not super interesting. She's probably going to get her own series. Don't know why. Not super interested in this character at all. Uh, the character had like little to no character development. Not even sure what in the world her arc was other than her dad... Again, spoilers, was allegedly killed by the Ronin, but in fact, well, I guess he was killed by the Ronin, but was that was ordered or set up by the Ultimate Series villain, who was Vincent D'Onofrio as the Kingpin. Very excited. Glad to see him back. Hopefully that means a lot more of Daredevil, which we already enjoyed the those two, well, three seasons of Daredevil on Netflix. I don't know if they'll be as dark and as heavy as, as they would be on Disney but either way glad to see him back so uh, lots of stuff happens that's not that interesting like uh, Clint has to go back and get his LARPing he has to go to a bunch of LARPers live action role playing people to get his his, his uniform back his, his Ronin costume back there's a lot of um him getting hurt, bantering back and forth. I did like the fact that he has PTSD 
from not only from all of his Avengers things. So not only does he have like physical damage because he's also hard of hearing, which I thought was a really nice ad there because of all the explosions and stuff. But he also has PTSD for what happened with Natalie. Uh, Natalia, the uh, Black Widow there. And so this sort of connects to uh, Black Widow, but not 100%. It's very, it's a little confusing there. And I guess they could always retcon it, but somebody made a mistake here. And I'll, I'll get into it a little bit. But at the end of Black Widow, uh, the lady in purple, and I forget her name, but the chick from Seinfeld, says, do you want a chance at getting the man who killed your sister? And she shows him a picture of Clint Barton. So as Katie Bishop and uh, Hawkeye are winding up their investigation as to who also, also there was a murder, which nobody seemed to care about. That was kind of irrelevant. There's a murder and it disappears. There's no, nobody knows what the motive is. I still don't, I must've missed the explanation even though I watched the show, it was so quick. So, I'm pretty sure what ends up happening is that uh, as they f they figure out that the watch is there to uh, it, it gives away the identity of uh, a secret agent that they don't want uncovered, which turns out to be Clint Barton's wife. They end up all meeting on a rooftop where uh, Echo is taking on Clint Barton and then a black widow who ends up being uh, Yelena shows up. So Florence Pugh shows up reprising her character. I did enjoy the interactions between her and Katie Bishop. They were kind of funny. Um, so they finally come to terms with everything where Clinton gets to talk. Clint, she wants to kill Clint, but Clint talks to her and they have, uh, they didn't hug, but they should have. And uh, he, she no longer wants to kill him. She was apparently hired by Katie Bishop's mom who works for the Kingpin. Apparently Katie Bishop's mom also killed that guy with a sword. I don't know how she did that. They didn't explain it. I don't really understand her future father-in-law who I guess they're not getting married anymore. It's the swordsman. I don't know what he had. No, he was just a red herring in this whole thing because he was uh, framed. All these extra story plot points are kind of irrelevant. Fight scene at the end with between Katie Bishop and the Kingpin is kind of interesting because he's exceptionally stronger. Like they actually did something for once where it made sense. She's not as experienced. She's significantly smaller and she couldn't do any damage to him whatsoever. And essentially, she had to beat him by using one of Clint's trick arrows and knocked him out. And then he gets away. The very end, uh, Echo figures out that it was really the Kingpin's fault for her father's death. So she shoots him. We don't know. I doubt that he's dead. People may forget. I'm thinking they're tying this into to Daredevil. He is wearing a suit that is made of that same like Kevlar type thing that, that Daredevil was wearing. So all of his suits, I think, were tailored that way. So I suspect there's something to that. Um, what else? Ha I think that's pretty much, and then they're partners. And that's it. Now, plot being aside, let's talk about the goods, the bads, and the uglies. First of all, well, let's go to Rotten Tomatoes. Just see what the audience thought. Audience gave it a 90%. Critics gave it a 92%. From what I understand, it did not do very well. And that's probably because when you have your opening credits and the show's supposed to be about Hawkeye and we're expecting it to be about Hawkeye, your opening credits are about the about Katie Bishop and how she's great at what she does because she was a collegiate athlete and all these other things. No additional training, mind you. You know, she's taking on super spies who've had years and years and years of training and field combat expertise and all that. The one thing I will say is that she wasn't like the bestest ever. She was very good, but, you know, not the greatest thing in the world. She didn't really get to show off that many skills. And she did have, Clint did get to train her and mentor her a little bit. Granted, she became the best ever over a couple of days, but what are you going to do? Uh, then you have um, 
So when you have that as your intro, you're going to turn people off. People are going to be like, I tuned in for Hawkeye and I'm getting this Katie Bishop character that I've never heard of before. And it's her story. It's really her story, not so much Clint's story. I did like how much uh, Jeremy Renner was in it. And if Jeremy Renner was not in this, I would not watch it. Uh, Haley Steinfeld, for those of you who don't know, was is Hollywood's next it girl. They're trying to make her something special. They're trying to make her the next Jennifer Lawrence. In fact, if you didn't know this, that Harvey Weinstein interceded in the Hunger Games and took the lead role of Katniss Everdeen from Haley Steinfeld and made Jennifer Lawrence that character. Haley Steinfeld would have been much younger at the time and played the character more accurate to the book, but they wanted to make Jennifer Lawrence something. So it's just kind of weird how Hollywood works. Somehow, this girl who's supposed to be like the, you know, this famous archer chick, Katniss Everdeen, whatever, they even made a joke about it in the show. Like somebody dressed up and she's like, oh, that's like a Lady Hawkeye or something. He's like, no, that's Katniss Everdeen. She was supposed to be Katniss. So, what? I don't like that stuff. It kind of irks me. But anyway, she is somewhere in between mildly charming and completely irritating. So she's a little whiny. Don't particularly like her that much. If you've ever watched her show, you've definitely heard me talk about um, my disdain for Haley Steinfeld. She was not that offensive in this, though. I, I actually kind of enjoyed it. Um, Florence Pugh was pretty good again. I like her. I thought she was really amusing. She did some funny things. Apparently, I don't know if she's trying to be method, but there's a scene where she's eating macaroni and cheese with a lot of hot sauce in it. Well, she did it for real. Every take, man, because she's that committed. Uh, I also really enjoy Vincent D'Onofrio. Any t chance I can get to see Vincent D'Onofrio as the kingpin. And I read an interview with him and they asked him, did you watch your old material since it's been a while since you've been to kingpin to, to be, be him again? He's like, no, 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 I don't watch my old stuff. He's like, that's too... Yeah, oh, I get that. He doesn't want to do that. And then he, what he does is he he actually says he has certain memories that he taps in for certain characters. And then he just was allowed himself to to go back there. And it was, it was glorious to see. He also had the costumes were directly from the comic books. And he, in fact, said that the um, the Hawaiian shirt one with the white suit and the, the white hat, that shirt or that costume was actually the not screensaver, but the background screen for his computer. Uh, I think it's called the All in the Family arc. I forget. Uh, but he knew it. So that goes to show you he, he really cares. Problem, another problem that I have with the show, because it's not all peaches and creams, kids, is this. It, this this is a Marvel problem, and I don't know what they're doing, and it's kind of irritating me. Like, I understand giving people a chance to do something, but giving peop uncredited people who, you know, what is this, diversity hires of the week, um, it's Bert and Birdie are the writers and their partners, Bert and Birdie. And I don't know who Birdie is. I don't really particularly care. Uh, they're just people. But if you look at their credits, you've got somebody who directed two episodes of one TV show, two episodes of another TV show and did themselves and have only written one thing. And they directed the majority of the episodes of Hawkeye. So Bert and Birdie directed the majority of the episodes and the other director was the last episode, which was the best episode was directed by a totally different person. So that's where I'm, I'm coming at this. Like you keep giving, like it's maybe give them one episode, but you gave them the majority of the episodes. Like what's going on here? Why did you do this to us? I don't understand. I'm going to look up the director for the last episode Reese Thomas so let's I guess he is they claim he did three episodes but he did the last episode and I thought that was the best one this guy's done Saturday Night Live a whole bunch but again another person without a lot of you know did 20 you know not a big time director huh either way like I yeah just mostly an executive producer of a lot of stuff but still not really sure why this guy why are they picking these people to, to to direct these shows? Like, it just doesn't make that much sense to me. I find I find it to be, like, irritating that you have... Because it was clear. Like, they weren't... The pacing sucked. There was... The pacing was not good. The dog was it. There's a dog in it. The dog adds literally nothing to the plot. Echo's plotline did literally nothing. It was, like, amateurish at points where, you know, you have this big bad reveal and... 
I'm like, who is this person? Why, when they reveal Echo, I'm like, why am I supposed to care about this? You know, she like dismisses one of her henchmen and I'm like, she wasn't doing anything that was intimidating. Like, how am I supposed to be intimidated by this person? You did absolutely nothing to set this up. I just didn't understand that. The tracksuit gang made like a little, like little to no sense to me. Uh, why would the Kingpin surround himself with a bunch of buffoons like that? You know, the Kingpin is a killer and do he like, runs this whole town. And yet he has these absolute idiots running his his gang like what what is going on here and i know he has multiple gangs don't get me wrong but it was just ludicrous what else didn't i like besides the pacing and some of the some of the acting i it just is up until the last episode i was like yeah do i like this and then when i saw the last episode it tied everything up nicely and based on the performances of jeremy renner like i i really did like it i could see why the audience tuned out I'm still mad about the, you know, what are they doing with Marvel TV and all this other stuff, but what else? Uh, the, the Trick Arrow stuff was good. They pulled some of it right out of the comic books. That was fun. I, I do like how they try to pull things directly out of the, the comic books. Look, there's Yelena with her hot sauce. Super fantastic. Um, What else? Echo, kind of like annoying and didn't really add anything. I don't understand who... It's a future hero who turned out as a criminal or starts as a criminal. Her last thing in the show is her killing, like uh, killing uh, Kingpin. Like what, what's the point? But I would say that this was more fun and more coherent than the other MCU episodes. There wasn't the same sense of like screwed up uh, mentality. There's, you know, weird absent things that didn't make it. Like there's a whole episode where Clint goes to in interact with a bunch of LARPers they make a big deal about his costume. There's so many times when they're sitting and eating stuff, like stop with the sitting and the eating. I know you guys think like this is important for like being woke is that you have to sit and eat and talk to people. Like just stop it. How, just count how many conversations there are in this show where people are sitting and eating. It, it's just ridiculous. It's too much. So anyway, um, how do I rank it from all? I guess this is number one. It's the best one. What If was was good, but not super consistent. This one was at least mildly consistent compared to the others. WandaVision made no, I liked it the first couple episodes and then wandered into kind of a mess at the end and it was morally ambiguous and they had a bunch of cameos that turned into junk. At least these cameos were legit. They did it, they should have used Kingpin much earlier. They should have put him back in sooner, but they did not. Uh, I did like the Easter eggs with uh, Hawkeye's car was cool and the Pym particle arrow was kind of cool and all the fancy arrows was cool. Uh, the costume, my good googly moogly, those costumes are ugly. Well, who thought they were good costumes or why you would let LARPers make your costumes? I don't know. You have access to the military. You still work for them, don't you, Clint Barton? You know, uh, I feel like there's people out there who could help you, somebody, anybody. So anyway, I hope I broke it down. If you missed, if I missed anything, let me know. I'm probably sure I missed something important. Let me know down in the comments below. Catch our full length audio podcast. It's free. It's on iTunes, Spotify, all those other good places. And catch our live streams Friday nights, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I enjoyed this one. I don't know how you felt as much as I like to rant about the MCU. It's only because I care. So anyway, that's it for me. And I am on to the next one.